Okay, so today's video is about Firebase authentication. Firebase authentication is pretty simple with Google helping you out a bit, but we'll make sure to go through everything so nobody has any questions. Um, so the first thing you will need to do is to add Firebase to your project. We did that in the last video uh, titled Firebase CRUD. But, so you can go check that out. I'll make a card or something around here so you can click if you don't know how to do that. But basically, you have to add, a pl add this plugin line. Um, and here you have to add Google Services and a couple other things, including the Google Services file here. So that's already done. Let's mark that off the list. Next, you need to make sure you add Firebase Auth to your pubspec.yaml. So Firebase auth and save it and you'll get that package. So let's just let's just make sure we restart the app so everything's everything's synced up. Dart flutter and then then we have our uh, let's check that off the list. Then we have our main file. So here I have set up a very simple framework, kind of, not framework, a little skeleton of the app. All we have is a center widget and a column of two text fields wrapped in some padding to make it look a bit nicer because it was ugly. And uh, two buttons, one called sign up and one called sign in. These two buttons will do something when pressed, but we'll implement that together. So next thing on the list you see is enable options in Firebase. So in Firebase, we have an authentication window. In the authentication window, you'll have all your users. And then you have a sign in method. So here we're going to want to use email and password. That's the simplest one. I, I don't know if it's simplest, but you have all these other options that you could use. So you have Google. With the Google one, you're going to need to enable the SHA-1 fingerprint when setting up your project. You can just follow the instructions on that. It's not too bad. And each of them have their own instructions of what you need to do. So once you have that, you're pretty much ready to go. Here we have the app with the two text fields, like I told you, and two buttons, sign up and sign in. They don't do anything right now. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to add a instance of our Firebase auth. So to do that, you do this Firebase auth, it'll automatically import the package you need. Um, then we could say, call this auth, and then Firebase auth dot instance creates an instance of it for us. Another thing we'll need is auth result. Auth result is just what you get back when you, like what you get back when you create an account or try to sign in. Then we're going to set up two functions, one called sign in and one called sign up. Let's change this to login just to be clear that these two are different. So the login function will be called when we want to log in. Login. Two underscores? No, just one. Sign up function will be called when we want to sign up. See this change, you got the login button now instead. Those don't do anything. In order to sign up, now these are, let's put one on top of the other because my OCD is kicking in. <laughs> there. So in the sign up function, we're going to want to pass in a string of email and a string of password because we need to create an email and password that we want to sign up with, right? And then we're also going to want to make this an async function since it is it is going to be contacting the database. We don't want it holding up our whole app. And then anytime 
you do anything with async, I think it is a very good practice to always wrap it in a try catch. Just like that. Just so you, you try calling the server, if something doesn't work, your program won't crash. Do the same thing for login. And we'll make that also an async. And might as well put the string email and string password in here too, since it will need the same parameters. You're going to need to sign up with it with an email and password, and you're going to need to log in with an email password. So to sign up, you need to call the auth provided with the instance that you made and call sign in, oh, wrong one. Create user with email and password. Pass in the email that we have, pass in the password that we have, and there you go. That will create an account. We can have, uh, we can put this in the auth result. It will return the auth result that we called for. And we need to await until it's finished. And here we will have an auth result with the user created. So we can put a print statement afterwards saying uh, account created for user and then auth, auth result dot user dot let's say email and if we try that out it's not going to work because we're not passing an email or a password in. So how do you get an email and password in here? You're going to need a text editing controller for these two. So let's set that up. Text editing controller is something that controls what's in the what's in the text editing what's in the text field. So You'll be able to can get the content from it. You'll be able to change whatever, change it to whatever you want. That's pretty straightforward. Controller for the password as well. All right, so we have the two controls here. Um, in the text field, you'll have a controller section where you can give your your controller value, controller, and then email, uh, password. So now these two have all the data that your text field has. You'll see now in the sign up section, we could put email controller dot and you have all these options you have uh, has listeners hash code value the one we're going to want to use is text and then pass controller dot text as well so now you're passing whatever you type in here and you're calling the sign up function and it will try to create a user with email and password and give you an auth result of whether it has created it or not. So let's let's try that out. Put an email of hey at gmail.com and then one, two, three. Sign up. We're going to get a problem. We already have a problem. Two positional arguments but expected one. Okay, fine. <laughs> Email controller dot text and then pass controller dot text. We set up too much and we deleted it. Great. Let's type that in again. Hey at gmail 
Chat.com and then one, two, three, sign up. Should see a problem since we had the print statement here. The problem is weak password. The password given is invalid. It needs to be at least six characters. Okay, fine. Four, five, six. Sign up. Account created for hey at gmail.com. That's that's pretty much it on here. We should reload it and we have an account. Easy as that. So to sign in now, let's create a second page so that you can see the actual sign in happen. Let's call this sign in scaffold app bar app bar title text signed in we'll just keep it at that for now so in the login section very similar process we have auth and then sign in with email and password pass the email password pass the password and just like that that's all you really need to do so auth result equals await same scenario as up here and then if uh, you can check if auth result dot user dot exists is that one dot uid let's say it's not equal to no then we can navigate to the next page dot push context if you confused about what's going on here I have a video about routing and everything as well so let's try it out everything is still typed in let's log in and there we go we're signed in so that's the very basics of it you can do another option you can have a verify email so you know we know this email is fake there's no verification going on you might want to make sure a person puts a real email in right so that is not much harder at all so we create the account and then we want to auth result dot user dot send email verification and then here if we do is email verified we'll turn a boolean else print you need to verify verify email that's it's as simple as that so now this one will still work because it's already it didn't have to verify it Never mind, I was wrong. That one doesn't work. So that is verified email still doesn't check out. And I don't think we'll have an opportunity to verify because we never send, we don't have another function that sends the email verification. So now let's, that's not what I wanted to do. Now let's create a legit one. Okay, here's our email. We can sign up. You notice you still get account created. Your account's created, and then we sent out the email verification, but if we try to log in, you need to verify email. So what do you do? You gotta go get the email. And here is the email link. So we have to verify, we just click this, your email has been verified. Now if we go to this, we should log in, and we're able to sign in. So that's, that's the basics of authentication. With email password, it doesn't get much much harder with the Google sign-in. You just need to do a couple steps before. If you have any questions, make sure to leave it in the comments.
I'll have this code on GitHub if you want to reference it. And like, like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.